What a glorious day it is to be able to be together again as we study God's Word, and so thankful that you are watching and, and joining in this uh, devotional together, and we're uh, working our way uh, through the Gospel of Mark, and we are in chapter 7. Uh, in this lesson, in this study, we're going to look at verses 9 through 13. Now, it's a continuation of uh, a situation, circumstance that, that Jesus was involved in when uh, teachers of the law, scribes, Pharisees, have gathered, and they are challenging uh, Jesus, uh, particularly in his permissiveness uh, with his disciples, that he's allowing his disciples to uh, not follow the rigorous uh, Jewish traditions that had developed over the years. And so really, that becomes a question of uh, authority and truth. And what is the, the word of God? What is the law of God? And how does that function in um, the, the life of those that are uh, God-fearers? And in this case, how does it function in the life, not just of a God-fearer, but as a one who is a disciple of Jesus? And one of the things uh, I hope, if you checked out uh, yesterday's lesson, is that Jesus, Jesus is the giver of the Word. He is the Word incarnate. And so to call into question the word is to call into question Jesus. There is no one who had more ability and knowledge and authority to speak on and about the word of God than Jesus. And that continues in our lesson today as we pick up in verse 9. And so after that elongated kind of intro, let's pray and ask the Lord to, to speak. Oh Lord, we do turn now to Holy Scripture, which is, which is your word, uh, living and active, inspired and infallible. And we pray, O oh God, that, that you would speak. Speak not only in the hearing of your word, but speak in the, the applying to our life by the Holy Spirit. And speak because your word is truth, and your truth testifies to who you are, Lord Jesus, and all that you are as Savior and Lord. And so we ask, please, now your help in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark 7, starting in verse 9, it says, and, and he is Jesus. So it says, and he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. I have to tell you, this is one of those times in the Gospels, in the ministry and the life of Jesus, where in no uncertain terms, Jesus, in, in a righteous way, is riled up, and he is not going to let this go. This is a, a central point. This is a foundational issue that Jesus is not going to allow to, to go. He's not going to speak in parables. He's, there's no uh, tiptoeing around this. He goes right for it. And, and particularly, what is Scripture? What is the Word of God? And what, what does it mean to, to treat and to trust the Word of God as authoritative? And so Jesus is very, very demonstrative, very adamant about this. And, and the, a few points that he really is making here in, in verse 9, he, he starts right out and saying, you have a fine way of rejecting, key word, of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. Jesus is, is saying you reject the word of God so that you can establish your own word. The, the only way is to get rid of God's word so that you can establish your own word. And, and, uh, and so he's saying that's what, that's what the, the traditions that have developed through the, the, uh, 
uh, added uh, commentaries and, and ideas and thoughts that the, the Jewish thinkers and teachers throughout the years, and, and not just that, but the, the, uh, the nuances of extra things that they had to do to abide by the law and the commandments, they were rejecting God's word and commandment so that they could establish their own. They were seeking to displace. That's what Jesus is saying the problem here is. Now, he, he uses an example. He talks about honoring your father and mother, the, the first commandment that is with promise that they talk about in the Ten Commandments, the, the first commandment with promise. Honor your father and mother that it might go well with you and you live long in the land. And, and so uh, Jesus is saying, you say that, you say and you recognize, oh yeah, honor father and mother. And then you have a comma and the little word, but honor your father and mother, but if a man tells his father and mother, whatever you had gained from me is Corbin, meaning it is a blessing devoted to God. It's a gift from God. It's, it's something there. Then that, what, what the tradition was, okay, uh, it's Corbin. It's, it's given to God. And therefore, I don't need to show you, mom and dad, as the honor that you think you need because the honor has already been given to God. And so it was a way of kind of uh, taking away responsibility of sons and daughters from fulfilling this commandment of honoring father and mother. What they did then was they revised the rigid requirement, honor father and mother. They would revise the commandment so that they could evade uh, uh, being accountable to the commandment. They, they, did no, they no longer had to operate and act and live with reverence for that. And so one of the things then that is at heart here is the, the relationship between the rules and the law of God and the rules and the law that, that human beings devise. And, and so one of the things that we have to understand whenever you are maybe reading through the Old Testament, I know uh, in my daily Bible reading, I'm now into First Chronicles, but you get through the, the law portions, you get through Exodus and Leviticus and and Numbers and Deuteronomy, and it can be very laborious to read through and wade through, I want to give you a little hint. The, the rules, now you can study the, de the details, and, and I, that's very worthy uh, to do. But the big picture is, is the rules that God gives is designed to reveal his righteousness. So the rules are serious because God's righteousness is serious. And so the rules of God, the law of God reveals his righteousness. And so to erase or remove or to revise the rules and the law of God is to revise God himself. It's to diminish the character and the nature of who God truly is. Now, that, that's like, you know, someone coming to you or me and, and speaking demeaning of our character and putting us down, and, and that's an insult because it doesn't fairly and honestly represent who we are. To, to lessen and loosen or even let go of the word of God is to loosen or let go of God as he truly is. And that leaves us in a very dangerous place. I love how St. Augustine, uh, keenly aware of this, concluded uh, this, this way. He goes, if you believe what you like in the Gospels and reject what you don't like, it is not the Gospel you believe, but yourself. To, to exert a, a choice over what you will like and accept and what you dislike and reject means that the text or the word or whatever is outside of us is not authoritative. I am authoritative and I get to decide. And I have to let you know, this is an, a rampant and incendiary problem in our world today, particularly in a postmodern world that, that calls into question uh, foundations of truth and the knowability of truth and the absolute and universal nature of truth. It's things have become rel relativized and situationally uh, uh, applied and, and understood. And so this is foundational. This is foundational to not just the Christian faith from a human perspective, but it is fundamental for us uh, in terms of really being able to know who God truly is. 
And so Jesus, Jesus here is, is peeling back all the disguise and all the veils and all the pretense. And he knows that was, what is at stake here is a controversy between the authority and the rules that humanity establishes and the authority and the rules or law of God. And that's what's at stake. Now, I have to tell you, kind of wrapping up, we don't, as much as we want to have the ability to be master and commander and controller and divisor and developer of rules and truth, we are so small and ill-equipped to really be able to handle that kind of power and authority and influence. We, we just, we, we're so small and we're so limited, we can't handle that. Not to kind of get too much with uh, a few good men, but we can't handle the truth because the truth is representative of God and we cannot control and corral and box God in. All that we can do is bow in reverence and humble belief and trust and faith, devotion and love before God. Because when we are before God, we are before an authority and a power and a being that far exceeds anything that we could ever imagine, anything, any one we could ever encounter. Brothers and sisters, that's the longing that Jesus, uh, or that's the issue Jesus is uh, wrestling with. And that's the longing that the, that the Lord by the Holy Spirit longs for us as his people to then reverence. And I'm not afraid of these words, but to reverence the inspiration, the inerrancy, and the infallibility of God's word. That it, what it says is true. And what is true is found in what it says. Friends, may we have such reverence for God's holy word. Let us pray. Oh God, would you please free us from thinking that somehow we could live as an authority over your word. That somehow we could, we could uh, join you either in equal or, or it's superior to you as an authority over you. Humble us, oh God. And I pray that with joy and with faith, we would bow before you and we would live under your word, which is living and active and sharper to even the, the dividing of joint and marrow. Oh God, it, it exposes the secret thoughts and intentions of our heart. It diagnoses our soul and it offers us, it speaks and tells us of the, the only true lasting eternal hope for us and for our salvation. So God, help us to reverence, trust, and accept as true and right and real your holy word, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks so much again for this lesson, being with us, and, and be sure to turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on upcoming uh, devotionals. I also ask, leave some, some comments, some thoughts, some reflections, uh, insights that you are gaining from our time together. And may you, as you go through this day, as you start this day and go through this day, may you have a renewed love and dependence for the truth of God's holy word as it is found in our the, the Holy Scripture in our Bibles that we are blessed to be able to have. God bless you today.